Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Yun, and on this YouTube channel, we dairy farm. So we milk about 320 cows now, and uh, next week, we're gonna start making the feed for those milk cows. Uh, we're gonna start chopping some alfalfa. So in today's video, we're gonna start to get stuff ready, get the equipment ready to go, switch the trucks over from grain to silage mode, basically. And right now, actually, we're gonna start out by hooking the chopper up to our Bueller Versatile, our MX-285, as you guys saw this spring, the transmission got buggered up on that thing and it's in the shop right now, it's split. We can take a look at that maybe a little bit later in today's video. Transmission is completely out of that thing and split in half, so we're not gonna be chopping with that thing anytime soon. So instead we're gonna be using what we would regularly have in front of our sprayer tractor, uh, the Bueller Versatile over here in the back corner of this shed. So we're gonna pull it out and get this thing hooked up to our JF stall chopper, which is actually in our hay shed right now. I gotta get this thing pulled out of the shed. But yeah, this is the thing we're gonna be chopping with. And uh, yeah, I mentioned this in a video or two ago. Got the mirrors on there. It's looking good nowadays. I already got it unhooked from the sprayer yesterday. Cause we knew we were gonna start chopping. So all I gotta do is drive it out, move an auger out of the way, of course. There's always something in the way. And then we'll get to work. Thing that I'm really stoked about using this versatile it has GPS auto steer in it which I will be able to use while we're chopping it's gonna make my job a lot easier there she is the JF stall the full type chopper that we use to make all the feed on this farm it's an awesome chopper and uh, yeah we're just getting it hooked up we had it parked in the hay shed here just because we, there's a little bit of extra room in here when we were um, putting gravel in that shed just didn't pull it out yet just as good as time now. My hitch is a little bit low, so. All right, I finally, after a little bit of time, found a pin that fits the chopper. It's a pretty small pinhole for that drawbar on the chopper. But we got our hooks up. Let's see if we pull away, it all goes good. There we go. There we go, we got the versatile hooked up to the chopper. It's looking pretty good. Played around with the hydraulics just to get them the way I like them for controlling it. Uh, the PTO shaft here, it's got a couple of bolts that hold it to the actual PTO of the tractor. That's just a little bit more solid. Typically PTOs will have like a little coupler and for some reason this chopper just has the bolts. It's a lot more secure and it's really tight on that PTO shaft. So it's not gonna come loose, start to wiggle itself out or anything like that. And uh, yeah, we got the hydraulics hooked up. Still need to hook up the control box for this chopper. There's a little electrical panel that needs to be set in the tractor. That's in our MX-285 right now, so it's kind of split. We'll take a, grab that thing out later, put it in there. Dima's taking the trucks out right now. We're gonna have to take the tarps off of those and uh, put the silage gates on there. It's pretty awesome to just be able to switch them over. They are silage boxes, but we do still use them for grain and fertilizer and all those kinds of things as well. So we're gonna have to take them off and swap them around. So in order to take the tarp off of the truck here, there's a four clamps that hold it down. So we're gonna take those off now. Dima's gonna lift me up in the loader bucket. Let me reach them a little bit better. That's the first tarp on the ground. Went pretty good. Just put them in the shed so they stay nice and dry. 
All right, so we took the tarps off of the trucks. Now we gotta take these bars out that hold the tarp up and also these front sections for the tarp. Kind of leads them in. And then we can put the gates on. Silage gates right there for the trucks. This thing's in the way. Good old calf mover. The first section of gating. So one side of the truck is way shorter than the other side, and that's because we always blow in from the one side. So the opposite side needs to be a lot taller. Just keep all the silage in the box of that truck. Make sure these slots are nice and clean. Good. First truck's done. Looking pretty good. I always like the way these trucks look way better with the silage gates versus the tarps. Now we gotta tighten the bolts holding these gates. And these are really important because when the box is tipping up and this gate is gonna be opening up this way, we don't want those gates to fall off all of a sudden when we're trying to dump the silage out of these trucks. Get them nice and tight. So now that we're done putting the gates on the trucks, we're gonna blow out the rads on these, blow out the air filters on the trucks, and we're also gonna be blowing out the rad on the loader here and the other air filters so just gonna maintenance everything get it ready to go for silaging all right so we got the box lifted up and this whole cylinder system here that's what actually lifts the box up, tips it over so you can dump the silage out. And what you just saw me do in there, putting these down, those are safeties. Just so that if a hydraulic line bursts open or for whatever reason it would slam down, those two posts are in the way. Both trucks have those safeties built in and it's really important that you use them. So go ahead and grease this thing up. Not in the box. What's that? Not in the box. So the MacDon swather is now ready to go. Just Brent just hooked up the swather header to it. The reason why we're not using the haybind header, this thing is literally more than twice as wide as that other header. And it's super windy, super sunny, super hot weather when we're gonna be chopping. But that's what the forecast says now anyway. And the alfalfa is gonna dry out quick enough for us to silage it anyway. So we don't need to crimp it and get that hay to dry out quicker. Uh, this thing's gonna do a perfectly good job. It's gonna go a lot quicker than that thing as well. So this thing is also now pretty much ready to go to cut some alfalfa. So we got the Versatel in the shop here so that Brent can take a look at that chopper, go through it, make sure it's good. It, today is Wednesday and hopefully next week Wednesday all of the alfalfa is under plastic in a pile. So that's what we're hoping for. We took the duels off of this Versatel just because we definitely don't need them while chopping. They probably start to get in the way of the pickup there anyway. So we had to take those off. And here we can see our MX-285 is split in two. The engine's right there. Transmission, two pieces right there. And uh, the rest of the tractor, the cab, and all that kind of stuff is right there. 
that's where the issue is guys the transmission blew on this thing this spring and it's sitting here split in half it's getting work done on it so again brent's doing that too he he can take the entire tractor apart and figure it all out so it's pretty cool so complicated looking i don't know how he does it but unreal anyway guys that is going to be it for today's video we got quite a bit done today we're getting ready for silaging and uh yeah i hope to see you guys in the next video thanks for watching